in the past couple of decades that I've been in the field of Dawa, I have realized that there are about 20 most common questions which the non-Muslims have regarding Islam. When the non-Muslim poses three or four questions about Islam, invariably, these three or four questions fall amongst the 20 most common questions. If all the Muslims know the reply to these 20 common questions posed by the non-Muslims with reason, logic, and science, with the quotation from Quran and Sahih Hadith, and the quotation of the scripture of the non-Muslim, even if he cannot make the non-Muslim accept Islam, at least he can neutralize the animosity that is there in the minds of the non-Muslims. At least he can neutralize the negative feeling that the person has regarding Islam. That's the reason it's very important that we Muslims are aware about these 20 common questions. How do these 20 common questions arise in the minds of the non-Muslims? Every day, the non-Muslims, they are being bombarded by the international media regarding misinformation about Islam. There is virulent propaganda regarding Islam in the international media. Whether you read the international newspapers, the international magazines, the radio broadcast stations, the television satellite channels, the internet, we find there is virulent propaganda regarding Islam. And depending how the media portrays Islam, these 20 common questions, they keep on changing. The 20 common questions that were there a couple of decades earlier, they were different than what they are today. The 20 common questions a couple of decades later may change again. Depending upon how the media portrays Islam, similarly, the 20 common questions keep on changing in the minds of the non-Muslims. And believe me, by Allah's grace, I have traveled to most of the major countries in the world. USA, Canada, UK, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Malaysia, South Africa, India. Wherever you travel, these 20 common questions are the same. There may be an additional one or two questions depending upon the local surrounding and the environment of that place. For example, if you go in the Western countries, there may be an additional question. Why does Islam prohibit the taking and giving of interest? But the remaining 20 common questions are the same. If every Muslim masters the reply to these 20 common questions, he will be able to do the fard, the compulsory act of da'wah to the non-Muslims. When you appear for an examination, if you at least want to pass with a good grade, not excellent, at least good grade, what you do, you read the guide. You know, in India, we have the Naunit 21 most likely questions. If you want to appear and pass favorably well, then you study the most common questions. In India, we have Naunit 21 most likely questions to appear in the examination. In every country, you have such books that if you want to do a shortcut and at least pass as far as the exam is concerned, similarly, these 20 common questions will at least make you a part-time die. If it cannot make the non-Muslim accept Islam, it will at least remove the animosity that is there in the mind of the non-Muslim. Time may not permit me to cover all the 20 questions in this time due to the limited time that I have. You can surely go on the internet on our website www.irf.net where all these answers are given in detail. There may be certain non-Muslims who may go out of the way and read material against Islam. For example, they may go to the anti-Islamic sites. They may read books written against Islam. As far as these non-Muslims are concerned, who go out of the way to find additional material against Islam, for that, we have another 20 common questions asked by non-Muslims who have gone to anti-Islamic sites and have read material against Islam. That we won't discuss today. That is, if you want to get, you know, maybe first class or distinction, you have to do that.
The reply to these 20 common questions asked by non-Muslims who go to anti-Islamic sites is also given on our website www.irf.net.